welcome everyone. Thank you for joining uh, us for the Momentum Summit. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Josh Boaz. I'm the managing director and co-founder of Direct Agents. Uh, we're a digital marketing agency uh, based in New York and, and Los Angeles. Uh, we've been in business for 17 years. Uh, and our core focus is really uh, user and uh, user acquisition and growth marketing. Um, we manage uh, clients' paid media, their earned media. Uh, we, we have a strategy and data practice and, and a kind of creative practice as well uh, to support all those efforts. So this is the fourth um, in a series of summits that we've had since the kind of pandemic hit. I think each uh, kind of each phase of the pandemic, we've, we've focused on different areas. Today, we're really going to talk about innovation, leadership, and, and data. Um, I'm going to start out in a few minutes just talking about the state of the industry, some of the macro trends we're seeing, things we need to pay attention with. Uh, next, in, in conjunction with our partners at Telium, we're gonna talk about people-based targeting. Uh, following that in our third session, uh, we're gonna speak with Google about uh, d uh, direct consumer strategy and what's what's next. Um, uh, in our fourth session today, we're gonna to, uh, talk with Facebook and really look at opportunities to come in 2021. Uh, and finally, we're going to talk, have a discussion about just uh, diversity and, and, and inclusivity um, along with our partners at, at Black Enterprise. So for, for my, uh, my session, some things that, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to talk about, uh, really looking at uh, some of the, the really the, the big ideas, right? What's, what's happening macro, at a macro level um, across COVID? What, how's that impacting the economy? What are trends we're seeing there? Uh, then focusing on how those uh, macroeconomic impacts are shifting consumer sentiment um, and uh, in what direction consumers are, are, are going, how that consumer sentiment, those consumer sentiment uh, uh, shifts are really uh, changing consumer behavior. Uh, what areas of uh, industries are we seeing opening up? How people are going to uh, kind of make uh, changes in their lives uh, uh, in, in the months to come? Uh, also going to look at a couple of trends, uh, trends to watch and leave you with a couple of takeaways and, and implications. So start out, uh, what's the state of the pandemic and when will it end, right? That's the, the million dollar question. Um, this is some research from uh, from McKinsey and Company where they kind of game gamed out different scenarios, and basically it's a combination of not just when a vaccine will be available, but when the probability of um, widespread usage would be, uh, the ability to actually distribute vaccines, and uh, some some return to kind of a. a, a uh, Pre-COVID normal uh, in in terms of uh, pandemic conditions, and from a, from a variety of different uh, kind of calculations, they came up with the most likely scenario is that Q3 by Q3 or Q4 of next year when is when the situation would fully normalize. Now, there's lots of variances that could come, and to push that earlier or later, but kind of as business leaders, I think that's an important uh, metric to think. So we have anywhere from another nine months to a year of this kind of new new normal. Uh, now, along the way, many things are going to change, and 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 most for the better. So, um, but I, it is nice to see that there kind of is, is kind of a potential end end date in mind. Uh, so, what does that mean, uh, kind of macro level economically? Um, there's there you know kind of many different scenarios again you know, based on growth rates, but the, I think the big question. Um, is when will uh, economic growth, when will uh, GDP return to kind of pre, pre-COVID uh, levels? Uh, and there were a lot of talks um, when we first started this series of discussions with you on was this going to be a V-shaped recovery? Was this going to be a U? Was this going to be an L? Um, it's still looking like a kind of elongated V in a way. Um, but economic uh, recovery in the sectors that haven't already started seeing rebounds is looking like into Q1 of next year is when you'll really start seeing the headwinds of, uh, of the economic recovery. So in a way, even before the, co you know, the overall COVID situation is fully um, under control, you'll see the ec uh, economic uh, activity really kind of start picking up uh, into, into next year. And what are the long-term implications, right? So you know, the kind of the first phase, um, you know, of, of this, when we first started talking to you in March and then into, into the summer, um, it really was around, you know, the, the spread of the disease, the COVID, uh, and, and all the different kind of COVID uh, restrictions that were in place in terms of travel and in uh, economic activity. As that's faded, the focus really is shifting towards 
how will consumer sentiment change? When will consumers feel confident uh, to start doing the activities they used to do? When will they start uh, feeling confident to spend the way they used to do? Um, and that's really going to be the story of 2021 uh, consumer, uh, 20, uh, consumer sentiment. Following that, the story for the next few years will be what are the long-lasting um, economic repercussions, right, of this of this period of time of, you know, of 10 million people plus unemployed for a prolonged period of time. Um, but for now, I think that the real, the, the, that interesting next story, and I think what will really have impacts into our kind of mid to, to long-term planning is consumer sentiment. Uh, and how is that sh sentiment shifting? Um, so uh, this is kind of plots out what are some of the um, kind of big concerns that, that people have? Um, is it uh, um, you know, people's uh, physical well-being, uh, the health of the family, and you see that, um, you know, uh, trending downwards over time. I mean, it's obviously still uh, top of mind to people, but really it's kind of the, the, the matrix is, you know, how does, uh, you know, th these health implications affect uh, financial uh, concerns. Um, and so one thing that is starting to creep up is people's, um, you know, as their health concerns start to uh, go down as the virus becomes more under control in different parts of the country and different parts of the world, financial concerns are, are starting to trend up. Um, and, you know, that has lots of implications. And I think as, as business leaders and as marketers, you know, you'll have different takeaways based on your, your segment, but uh, it's something to think about going into these uh, kind of you know, closing months of the year and into next year. Um, you know, one of the bright spots, and uh, as we've had these discussions along, you know, every, every few months, I always pr promise to try to be optimistic, and sometimes the data comes up pretty negatively, but I think this is actually where it is optimistic, and the, and the, um, the data does support um, kind of uh, optimism going into next year, is that uh, across the world, um, in, you know, in, in different countries that were surveyed, uh, Respondents, and these are you know kind of people, uh, people in general, uh, people in the general population at large, um, are starting to feel economic conditions improving. Um, some substantially better than they were, uh, you know, three months ago and six months ago. Some moderately uh, better, um, but in generally the 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 sentiment is, sh is shifting up. Now there is a portion of you know in these surveys of people that feel like their situation is worse, so there are people who have kind of been been left behind, they're unemployed, there's all kinds of other repercussions that they're facing. Um, but I think the, the positive uh, viewpoint is that generally people are trending in the, in the right direction for consumer sentiment. And what does the future look like, right? How does that sentiment shift if we go forward six months? Um, one way to look at that is looking at regions that have recovered faster. So, I mean, China is, is uh, is, is always the kind of case study, um, went through the pandemic first, has, has it much under control, along with a lot of kind of uh, Asian countries. Um, in, those, uh, in those regions, the optimism for the next six months is, is very high. You know, in 93% of, uh, you know, Chinese respondents uh, are, are positive and bullish on, on the future. Um, and even in North America, where, you know, it's arguable that, you know, many parts of the, the you know, the U.S. at least are not under control, 49% of uh, respondents are positive that, um, you know, that the, the next six months economically at least will be better than the, uh, the previous six months. So that all bodes well, I think, for, for, you know, for businesses and, and marketers. And how does that changing sentiment impact uh, some of their behaviors? So one travel, um, you know, that's, that's, that was kind of the first thing to be shut down. And, um, you know, if you, I think if you asked people six months ago, would you get on a plane, you know, domestically, internationally, it would be a no way. Um, but uh, just, you know, in the, in the last few months, uh, just even as, as of September, percentage of um, people that are intending to travel again, um, you know, at, now there's, the, the time frame is still TBD, but you know, out of the respondents, uh, you know, domestically, people, 100% of people said they would fly again. You know, 93% of people would fly internationally, right? And even within business, which is really kind of the, the concept of business travel has really changed um, in the last six months. Even then, people are uh, saying they would um, travel again, and those numbers are starting to, to, to trail upwards. Uh, and then what other consumer behaviors are being impacted and when will they, um, you know, start, start recovering? Um, so you can see uh, in these bar charts, like the, the rightmost um, 
the rightmost column is September. So you can see every every month uh, consumer sentiment kind of uh, eking upwards, right? And you know, people's uh, desire to stay in hotels and um, you know go you know take a vacation rental, all 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 uh, moving up and to the right. Um, so which is is great for uh, the economy at large. Cruise ships. Still, people are still a little skittish about getting cruise ships, understandably so. But I think in, in many other areas, we're seeing positive outlooks on what people will be open to doing again in the next uh, 12 months. Um, and then, so what are some trends to watch, right, from some of these consumer behavior changes uh, and as a result of some of these the shifting sentiments? Um, so one of, the, one of the things that we saw happen, and I think the data supported it uh, at, at large, was Consumers use the pandemic um, time, especially those you know those, those first six months and you know some of those, those more urgent months, to make changes in their life, make changes in the way they um, you know did their, their their kind of daily routines, uh, and then also the products they uh, products and services they purchase. So um, there was much uh, much more consumer. Uh, kind of shifting of, of in trial of new new products and new services um, in just in the U.S. kind of in the survey, what were some of the reasons that uh, the consumers uh, gave as, as to why they would try something new and why would they switch from their, their brand? Uh, and it really, and I think to support kind of this, this economic fear that many people have is uh, really just, it came down to low prices and better, better value, right? So many of the other, um, you know, the other, Things that would have propelled them in the past gave way to this kind of value uh, uh, value um, based uh, purchaser. So something to think about as we move forward and as as consumer sentiment changes and behavior changes in the months ahead. Uh, the other trend was just digitization, and this happened uh, not just um, you know for consumers and their purchasing, but you know in in terms of businesses. And the really interesting phenomenon was the speed of adoption, right? So this is if you think about you just you as as business leaders and as as as, as marketers, the, the, just the things you do in your day to day, right? Um, the amount of time you spend on Zoom and Slack and all these other uh, ways that we work now compared to just a few months ago, um, that change of pace has has just skyrocketed. And that same thing happened within kind of um, all kinds of different consumer segments for everything from their ability to scan menus with QR codes to you know order online and pick up in a store to uh, take streaming classes versus uh, real, in real life classes. So all, I mean, there's hundreds of use cases of, of businesses uh, you know, adopting quickly, but then I think the, the corollary is that consumers also adopted that change um, in, in rapid succession. So to, that, that speed of change has been there and will only increase um, as we move forward. Uh, the other kind of interesting thing, kind of zooming out just from the, the, the business and industry standpoint, is looking at what happens uh, to other companies in previous um, kind of economic crises, right, in, in the past. And the, the data is, is kind of by and large shows that companies that are the first to experiment within their industries, companies that are the worst, the, the first to invest more, even in times of uh, kind of crises, are the ones that see the growth in the future so those three years ahead if you if you kind of you know look you know uh, leap forward three years from now and see who were the winners who were the losers from this time period it's going to be the businesses that adopted to this quick change that ad adopted to that consumer behavior changes to the the, the digitization so things to things to, to look at and and uh, and start planning as we we move forward so what are some takeaways and implications that kind of tee you up for the rest of our discussions uh, today um have a recession and pandemic exit plan. The the you know it is coming. The end of this period will come. It will be a new normal for sure. But you you know I think this is a time to start thinking about what does my business look like. What do my consumers want as this pandemic starts to recede? Uh, you know, in six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, and start building towards that. Investing in the right infrastructure, technology, um, testing new markets, audiences, product strategies, etc because that end will come and your business has to be ready to, to take advantage of it. Consumers are getting more optimistic and they're embracing change, right? So they, on the one hand, they're seeing that, hey, life is getting better. I'm open to new things. On the other hand too, they're open to new things. So they're trying new brands out. They're trying new services out. They're, you know, they're becoming um, less loyal uh, per se to what they knew before because they're, you know, with their optimism is, is changing behaviors. 
uh, look further to shifts to digital. I mean, I think we've just scratched the surface and how businesses can reimagine and reinvent some of their uh, processes and the way they they touch consumers. Um, you know, so let's think this period of time has just kind of been the 2.0 of the shift to digital. What what does 3.0 look like um, in the next uh, six to nine months? Uh, and then I'd say finally sustain that first mover advantage. If you're one of that those top 15% of companies that have have grown even during this uh, pandemic, or maybe that group of 50% that have stayed the same, what can you do to keep testing, uh, experimenting, and, and leaning into you know, future change to be kind of be a maverick, to be those, those growth uh, uh, companies within your industry? So hopefully we give you some tools here, some ideas, some nuggets that you can take away and and uh, and be one of those uh, kind of first movers. And uh, as you know, uh, we'll share this presentation. We'll share my contact information if you want to get in touch. And uh, you know, thanks again for joining. And looking forward to a, a, a great discussion over the next uh, next couple of sessions. Mm -hmm.